solutions, solutions and titrations. Okay, you need to make notes on solutions and titrations. Okay, we're going to start with a solution. So what is, what actually is a solution? If I said to you to go and make a uh, solution of sodium chloride, you know, what does that mean? What is it? Okay, so um, if you have, we need some key terms. So if we have a solute, so what we say is the solute, the solute dissolves in the solvent, dissolves in the solvent, The solute dissolves in the solvent to make a solution. To make a solution. And you need to know what all these terms mean. Okay? So the solute dissolves in the solution in the solvent to make a solution. So if I said to you make a sodium chloride solution, the solute is the sodium chloride. And quite often it is a solid. It's not always a solid, but in this case it is a solid. So the solute is what you dissolve, it's a solid and you dissolve it in the solvent. And in this case, that would be the water. Okay, and it's always water. The solvent is always water, okay? And then that will make you, then you'll have a sodium chloride solution. You'll have a sodium chloride solution, okay? So that is what uh, uh, a solution is. And in chemistry, we make a solution by using a volumetric flask. A volumetric flask. Okay, and you're going to be using that in an experiment. It's got a long neck and it's got a flat bit like this. It's called a volumetric flask, okay? And normally, the one we use in chemistry is a 250 centimeters cubed volumetric flask. So if I said to you to go make a um, sodium hydroxide solution, you would dissolve the solute sodium hydroxide, you dissolve it in water, which is a solvent, and you'd make a solution. Okay? Right, we need to talk about concentration. Concentration. What is the concentration of the solution? The concentration of the solution. Okay? So if I said to you, okay, the concentration is two moles per decimeter cubed of, um, let's keep it with sodium chloride, of sodium chloride solution. Okay, what does that actually mean? Right, remember that when you have this minus three like that, that means dm minus three means one over dm to the power three. Remember from last time, one decimeter cubed is the same as a thousand centimeter cubed. Okay, so we did that on the last the last video. Okay, so that means for every for every decimeter cubed. So if I've got a solution and that's called a concentration, this is called a concentration of sodium chloride. This means that two moles of sodium chloride solid, the solute, remember that's a solute, sodium chloride solute is dissolved in one decimeter cubed of water, which remember is the solvent, which is a solvent, okay? So what we're saying here, when we've got a concentration of a solution, this is the concentration, and that means two moles of sodium chloride is dissolved in one decimeter cubed of water. Okay, and that is concentration. Remember, one decimeter cubed is just 1,000 centimeters cubed. Okay, so if we have a look at this a bit more, so let's say, so let's say we've got some sodium hydroxide. Okay, so say I've got I've got 0.5 moles per decimeter cubed solution of sodium hydroxide. OK, 
okay and that's a oh, this is called a concentration this is called the concentration of the solution concentration okay that means okay what does that mean that means 0.5 moles of sodium hydroxide which is a solid is dissolved in one decimeter cubed of water which is a solution remember one decimeter cubed is just a thousand centimeter cubed okay that's what it means so if we have uh, sometimes we use the terms concentrated solutions concentrated solutions and sometimes we use the term dilute solutions. Concentrated solutions and dilute solutions. So the difference between them are, is that concentrated means there's a large amount of solute. There's a lot of solute. Okay? A lot of solute in one decimeter cubed, which is just a volume of water. Whereas a dilute solution. A dilute solution means that there is there is not much solute, so a uh, little solute, little solute, little amount of solute. There's not much solute in one decimeter cubed. Okay, so when we use the terms, this is a concentrated solution. A lot of solute and a dilute solution means not a lot of solute. Okay, so this is one way to work out the concentration in moles per decimeter cubed, okay? But there's another way to work out the concentration, and that is in grams per decimeter cubed. Okay, so grams, instead of moles, we can use grams per decimeter cubed. So I'm gonna give you a question, okay? We're gonna work out a question together. So if I said to you, we've got a solution, okay, solution is 1.5 moles per decimeter cubed solution, of sodium hydroxide. Okay, solution, AQ solution. But I want that concentration, that's a concentration, I want it to be in grams per decimeter cubed. What is it in grams per decimeter cubed? So instead of moles per decimeter cubed, I want grams per decimeter cubed. So the decimeter cubed is fine, one, one decimeter is fine, okay? I want to convert the mole into grams to convert the mole into grams. So what's the relationship between moles and grams? Moles equals mass, which is in grams, over molar mass, which is in grams per mole. Okay, so if I've got a mole, which is 1.5 moles, and I want to convert it into, a gra into mass of grams, I need the molar mass of sodium hydroxide. So you work out the molar mass of sodium hydroxide, okay, and that just comes to uh, 40. And then we rearrange the mass equals 1.5 times 40. Sorry, my handwriting's not very good. 1.5 times 40, which equals, when you do that in the calculator, equals 60 grams. Make sure and you use um, your units. So, the question was, this is the concentration of the sodium hydroxide in moles per decimeter cubed. What is the concentration in grams per decimeter cubed? It's going to be 60 grams per decimeter cubed. Okay. Now, the reason why we have these two types of uh, two ways to express concentration is because when I ask a technician if I say, please, can you make me um, 0.5, or actually, let's do this one here, 1.5 moles per decimeter cubed of sodium hydroxide, how do they actually do it? They need to weigh the sodium hydroxide and then dissolve it in the water. And that's how they find uh, the concentration. So there are two ways to express concentration. Okay, let's try, let's try another example. A piece of paper try another example okay so question so this time you pause you pause the uh, the video and have a go at it yourself okay 
So this time the question is, we've got a solution which has a concentration of five grams per decimeter cubed. That's the concentration. It's sulfuric acid solution. It's sulfuric acid. Okay. What is the concentration of this solution in moles per decimeter cubed? We have to convert it from grams per decimeter cubed to moles per decimeter cubed. We need to use the equation moles equals mass over molar mass. We need to use that equation. Okay, oh sorry, you want to pause the video, have a go have a go at it, and then come back. Okay, so we know that the mass is five. We need the molar mass of sulfuric acid, which when you add that up is 98.1. Okay, and when you do that calculation, 5 over 98.1, you get 0 0.0510 moles. Okay, so now our concentration, we've got our moles, so our concentration is going to be 0 0.0510 moles for every decimeter cubed. So we have gone from a grams per decimeter cubed to a moles per decimeter cubed. Okay, right, so that's solutions. And next, quickly do about titrations. Okay, so about titrations. So what is a uh, titration? Now there's different types of titrations, but for uh, for AS, the main one we do is called acid base titrations. Okay, acid base titrations. And a titration is when you react two solutions together. So a titration is when we react two solutions together two solutions together to discover some information about one of them. Normally it's the concentration. To discover the concentration uh, of one of the solutions. You can find other information as well, but quite often it's the concentration of one of the solutions. Okay, um, and that's titration. So. Uh, you put these are the key words that you're going to be um, they're going to be using when you do um, a uh, titration. You're going to be using a burette, and we'll talk about these words next week. You're going to be using a pipette. Um, you're going to be using a um, standard solution. Now, a standard solution sounds complicated. But it's just a solution of known concentration. Solution of known, you know the concentration. Now, this is titration is a really accurate technique. Okay, you add two solutions together, one of them goes in the burette, one of them goes in the conical flask at the bottom. Use a pipette to help you. Conical flask. And you add them together and you do it drip, drop by drop. It's a very, very accurate technique. And you use it to discover the concentration of one of the solutions. Okay. When the acid, one of the uh, things is the acid, one is a base. And when they react together, you get neutralization. You get the uh, end point. Okay, an end point. Let me just write this down for you. So if you react an acid to so one of them, doesn't matter which one, one of them goes in the burette. Let's just say pretend this one's a, one goes in the burette, but it doesn't, doesn't matter which one. And then the base, this goes in the bottom, which is the conical flask, and you add them together. Now a burette is a long 50 centimeters cubed, it's got a tap on it. And it's a really, and you fill it up, it's a long glass tube, okay? Then in the bottom, you have a conical flask. You can have a go at this experiment next week. You've got a conical flask, and you've got your base in the conical flask. But it can be the other way around, okay? It's just, it's just for an example. And then you drip 
your acid down into your base and you swirl your flask and at some point all the base will have reacted it will all have gone at some point yeah and that is called the end point when all of the acid has reacted with all of the base sorry when, all, when the base is all reacted with the acid it's called the end point now the problem is that this is colorless the acids are always colorless and the base is colorless so it's really difficult to see when the end point is when all the acid when all the base has reacted with the acid okay when the moles are equal um, now it's difficult to see that because they're both colorless so we need to add an indicator and an indicator is something that changes color at the end point when it's all over the uh, indicator will change color and there, there are lots of indicators but the kind of standard one we use for a strong acid and a strong base is we use phenolphthalein so you've got to be careful with your spelling here of phenolphthalein we use phenolphthalein indicator which turns pink uh, it's pink in base and colorless in acid okay let's write that down colorless in acid and pink when it's in base and that's what we use to um, uh, find the end point okay so titration is a very accurate technique and it's you've got to be done very precise it's an analytical technique it's called volumetric analysis is its kind of full title volumetric analysis and you're gonna have a go at this experiment next week and there are a lot of types of calculations uh, involved.